Hello, hello. Good morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you are tuning in to watch the June 7th GEG SoCal monthly meeting. We are excited to bring you another asynchronous meeting that you can watch at your leisure. I am Karen Lagola, one of the GEG leaders. And of course, I am joined by the wonderful Nancy Minicosi. You can introduce yourself. The other yourself. GEG leader. <laughs> the other GEG and, leader. <laughs> and technology coach at Beverly Hills High School, just like Karen. As am I. And we are excited again to be with you. Um, as always, join our Google, our GEG group. Here is how to get in touch with us. You can email, join the group, check out our website, and we are on Twitter. So at any time, if you have anything, you can always find us there. Nancy's going to take us and show us, uh, give us a little information on what's new this month, Nancy. So I was really excited. If you um, have been having to do things repeatedly in Google Docs, like you decide that, oh, all of these things have to be bold and you have to go through and select each one and change, well, no more. You can make multiple selections using uh, the control key on your keyboard. And so you just select the multiple parts and then you can apply the formatting to all of those things. Also, if you are using uh, in Chrome, Google Drive, on the web, you can move and copy your files simply by clicking on them and then choosing Command or Control X to cut and then Control V to paste, or you can copy them and put a shortcut in using Control C and Control V. Another really cool thing that I love, 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 I'm so happy about this, is if you want to include a link to another document in a file, all you have to do is go to that your drive, click on the file one time, choose Control or Command C to copy it, and then you paste it into your document. It'll come in with the name of the file and it'll be linked. That works in uh, docs and slides and all kinds of things. It's so much fun. I loved it. It made my life so much easier. Excellent. We have links here, as you can see, on the slide deck, which will be linked below so that you can click around and you can find it, look at uh, more information and try it out. So today we're going to be talking about sheets. We do have some sample data here that you can look at when you want. But I will tell you that the what Nancy and I are going to focus on are the things that we run into often when we work with our teachers, right? So we work with teachers who collect data from their students, and then they get a spreadsheet, and they look at it, and they think, I can't read the data. I don't know where to go. So we're just going to talk about the standard things that you should do as soon as you open your sheet so that you can start to sort your data the way that you need. And the first thing that I do in any sheet is I use this box right up here between the one and the A, this little space, and I go in and I format by wrapping all of the columns. This really helps. You will notice that this particular form, the questions on the form were very long, so it was hard. I couldn't even see what my questions were. But now that I've wrapped the data, it makes it a little bit easier, right? So now I can see that. I can go across, I can look. The next thing I like to do is I like to use the Explore and I like to just automatically choose a color so that I can break up the data in a better way. Those are two great ways. This particular form has period six and period seven data. So I'm gonna come over here and I am gonna filter by values. Oh, there they go. Oh, there we go. So I want to filter by values and I'm going to create a filter for period six and I'm going to hit OK. And now it's just going to pull up all of my period six information so that I can see period six by itself in that filter. I can also do the same thing so that I can go back and forth. Um, and choose a period seven. Oh, I keep doing the same thing. Two, like that. 
And now you'll see I can see period seven data. You can save your filter so that you can switch back and forth. So that is a great tool if you're collecting data from multiple classes at the same time. Another thing that you may want to do is you may want to sort this data. So this happens to be a peer review form. So I want to see how my students graded themselves or rated themselves so that I can grade them, right? So I'm going to create and I actually want to do the range from not just the C column. That's I'm going to take that off because I was on C and that's not going to work for us. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go to conditional formatting. And I'm going to say that if the uh, number is equal to four, which is the best that they can rate themselves, I'm going to give each form a beautiful yellow so that I can see. Done. And then I'm going to add a rule that says if each one is less then three, I'm going to make it red. And what that means is that the twos, or no, that three isn't going to be selected. Because remember, when we're looking at this, we want to say value is less than or equal if we wanted the red. So she might go, Karen might go back and make two be something else. Another or I thing can you go could back do and is, say less than and equal to there, or I could do, yeah, what Nancy We said could also do a color scale, which is very fun. Right. I could do a color scale. So let's go up and do a color scale. So now I can show you the scale if my um, value is, we would start then at which I start at Nancy four, right? And go through. So the midpoint would be a number and that would be two. And, oh, I'm doing it opposite way. <laughs> and the max value is a number, which is not that, which is four. Since you and told then me I can nobody, create. Since you told me nobody had a one, maybe you should do the midpoint as three so we can show them how it looks different. Fabulous. And then I can come in, I can choose my colors. I can do it as a scale like it is here. I'm going to change this one to just be this lighter green. So it goes down. Is that the same color? Yeah, that. And I'm going to say done. I'm going to remove that one so that now we can just see it as the scale. So now you can see that again, my lower numbers, my twos are going to be darker. My threes are slightly darker than my fours. I would probably choose a slightly better scale here just so that I could really define and look between. The other part of this um, form is that the students got to write a little bit an opinion at the end. So if I wanted to look for a particular student, that's when I would do my control F, right? And I could pull up the data on that, or I could sort this in different ways as well. Nancy, am I missing anything else that we wanted to do with this data? Uh, no, I don't think so. I would say for the color scale, I personally like to use red, yellow, green for things like this. Because um, when you click on the preview, instead of custom, you can choose. They have different options. I don't see them now. Yeah. If you click on custom, you can probably change it. Let's ah, see. yes. So you can do like a. Yeah. We can change it that way. That is much nicer, actually because I think it stands out more. Um, yep. But I think that's really all we can say. Here's what I want to say about spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are awesome, and teachers use spreadsheets all the time because they're basically they, they're tables where you put in information. So don't be afraid of them. And reach out to us if you need help using them, because Alice Keeler will tell you the answer is always a spreadsheet.
Yes, don't be afraid. That's why we tried to show you just the visuals because sometimes when we look at them, we're afraid and we don't even dig in. So just reach out. We added in our slide deck some links to some tutorials and we hope that you will use them. But again, get in contact with us. And we're very excited for our upcoming meeting. We will be live again because it is two years. Can you believe two years of GEG SoCal? Yay! We will be celebrating on the day that we launch. So July 9th um, from 1030 to 12. We're, join us, please, for an interactive applied digital skills training. And we have a form here. It will be linked below as well for you to register. And we hope that we will see you there. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.